Welcome to Bayesian Statistics, Regression, Part 3. If you haven't watched the other two videos, you might want to go back and do it because I'm going to be modifying code that we got from the previous video. So go back to the previous video, make sure you copy down all the code so that you can work with it and that it's running. Otherwise, things aren't going to work out too well for you here because I'm not going back and explaining everything. Uh, we are using the Sydney Hobart boat race data. I think it's a fun data set, and you'll see why here in just a second, because things don't work out as nicely as you would like them to if you're too naive. But you can easily make it work correctly, and that's what we're going to do in this video. So it runs from Sydney all the way to Hobart. It's a really long race. Here's what one of the boats looks like. This is Wild Oats. I think it's won the most of the races. Uh, and it's from the pictures are from Wikipedia, and here's the, the um, you know, reference to it if you want to go get it uh our goal was to say well, as the years progressed did the time of the race take less time and here we have our blue dots which are the actual times and our green line which is the line of best fit and i'm putting best fit in inverted commas because i'm saying maybe it is maybe it isn't but it does seem to go through the data reasonably well and we want to know what is the equation of this line now, from our last video, this is what we ended up with, though. We're looking for this, ended up with this. And what we need to do is figure out how to fix this. Um, this is awful, right? The data is clearly going downhill, but this line has a slight positive slope saying it's going to go uphill? That doesn't make sense. So what we need to do is go back and look at it. And... The, the big thing here is, is that's why I like this example. If you're too naive and you think things are just going to fall right out of the sky for you, eh, they often don't. So anyway, let's, how do we fix this? So here was our model to begin with. Okay. And when I went through it, I said, ah, beta zero. I don't know anything about it. Zero, 100 squared. Problem is, is the, the intercept is way, way bigger than that way way bigger than that and this is the problem it's it's just too small and it is very informative even though i said it wasn't in the last video because i was trying to bait you along so that you would realize in this video you really do have to think about this you just can't blindly do something and expect good outcomes so what did i do is i changed it from a hundred to a hundred thousand okay now this is way bigger than the last time Okay, and the reason I wanted to do this is so that in this case, the intercept should be able to take on really big values. And maybe it's big enough, maybe it's not. We'll see how it works out. Uh, so this is the model from exactly the, the same as the last time, except I changed here. I put more zeros in here. There's a, there should be 10 zeros in there, if I count them right. So there's lots of zeros, and this is going to give me a real remember this is precision so this should give me a really really diffuse prior distribution for beta zero which is exactly what i need okay everything else is the same this is the only thing i changed was this bit right here so if you have it from the last video all you have to do is just change this line and we'll see how you'll see how it works uh same setup as last time I've changed nothing here but i'm just putting it here just so you know okay i've now i've got a new model because I changed the prior distribution. So that means the model has changed. Uh, same parameters, same initial values, and now we can save the file right here and run it and then update it. Uh, and I did all this, everything works out fine. Uh, here are my trace plots. Uh, when I run this trace plots, uh, notice it's flat. It looks like a fuzzy caterpillar, just like last time. Last time didn't lead us on that there was a problem. Uh, so this looks fine. Notice how big these numbers are on the side. And that was part of our problem is we didn't have it big enough. If you go back and look at the last video, these numbers were much smaller. The other thing here is, is for beta one, it's pretty flat, fuzzy caterpillar looking thing. And notice all of these values are negative. And that would make sense because the data was going downhill in a negative trend, right? It was sloping downwards. So this maybe looks a little better than what we had last time. And here's the values for sigma squared. Okay, again, exactly the same as last time. Don't need to change anything. Um, just stripping out the MCMC uh, change and putting them into a data frame so we can work with them. That's it. 
All right, then we're going to get some median parameter estimates. So we're going to get our parameter estimates. It's going to take the median of each just like last time. Nothing has changed. Really, the only thing in this video that you had to do was add a bunch of zeros. That's not that difficult. Everything else is going to be the same. Okay, so here's how the model fit. Wow. Well, that did a whole lot better than the last one, the one we started with up at the top. If you go look at it, the last red line was awful. Uh, does it match up with our green line, which was the one that we put in there? And it does. You can see a little bit of green showed up out here and out here, reflecting that line that we had before. So we have something that works now that if we use it right, uh, it should be reasonable. But notice just being naive and putting something into it, bad things happen. So keep that in mind. If you're working in a Bayesian framework, you just can't dump stuff in and expect it to happen. Where in a frequentist framework, sometimes that's what people do. But here, don't do it. Okay, so the next thing is, is what about prediction intervals? Right? We, we've got a boat race here. We want to predict how well they're going to do. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video is how do we predict with this thing? Now that we have it, how do we use it? All right, so we will talk about that in the next video, and I will see you there.